Hi everyone, welcome to week two. Just some lessons I wanna share with you from week number one. Uh, first off, thank you to those of you who needed help and you contacted me at my email. Uh, that is a much quicker way to contact me than via Google Classroom. Remember my email is rcrawford at jcpsmail.org. My email goes directly to my phone. I generally keep that with me. So it is the fastest way to get help. As a matter of fact, if you send me an email, if you will wait just a few moments, chances are I'm going to be able to get that and respond to you far better than Google Classroom. The only complaint that I had last week was a couple of you said that you had trouble getting videos to load or to play. If this happens to you, I want you to refresh your web browser. Now, hopefully at this point, you're all using Google Chrome. Uh, Google Chrome is just going to work better with Google Classroom and everything else that we do. If you don't have the Chrome web browser, take some time to get that, download it, get it in operation on your whatever device that you are using yet. So if you have the Chrome web browser and you're still having trouble with the video, then just hit, hit refresh. Do it several times if you need to. Trust me, it works. Now, let's suppose that you're still having difficulty. I want to show you a place that you can go because I actually want you to visit this this place here. This is a sixth grade website. So let's see if I can let's see if I can get you there. To get to that sixth grade website, we'll type in that address, and you will end up going over here. And our sixth grade website looks like this. Uh, if you look up here, there's a virtual learning tab. And if we click on that virtual learning tab, it's going to have office hours. Office hours are when you can expect us to be sort of, to be by our computer or by our phone. This is a good way for you to get some help. That's 9 to 11 and 1 to 3. All of your sixth grade teachers every day, Monday through Friday, are going to be looking for you and watching to see if you need help. We'll be grading assignments and giving you some feedback on how you're doing. Uh, please also notice that if you're looking for a way to get a hold of us, our email addresses are here. You cannot call these numbers. You can only email us. These numbers are for your parents. So if we go back, so if I hit the back button and we're back on our website again, first thing that comes up is a post for this week that shows all of the assignments. It says assignments for the week of March 31st through April 3rd. And you can see that they're broken down by day and by topic. So by day and by topic. So this was last Tuesday. And then here it is Wednesday and also Thursday. So website is a pretty handy place to come. If you're having any trouble, please notice that there are links here that you can use to get to the videos, that you can use really to get to anything that you're gonna need to get to. Uh, so please use the website if you're having trouble and do use our email for contact. Okay, let's see if we can get back. And go from our current slide. All right, so <clears throat> with that out of the way, let's move on to this week's lesson. Uh, I want to begin this week by thinking a little bit about our solar system. Uh, our solar system really just includes our sun and everything that's around it. Now, what I'm trying to show you here is a scale model. Now, this scale model doesn't show you where things are, and it doesn't show you how far apart things are. It only attempts to show you the relative sizes that that the objects in our solar system are. In other words, how big are the objects in our solar system when we compare them to each other? It's, it should be pretty clear to you when you look at this, uh, this scale model that the sun, which is that big yellowish orange thing there in the very center of the picture, is by far the largest thing in our solar system. Uh, our sun contains over 99.8% of all the matter, which means all the atoms in our solar system those are all in the sun. It is, quite frankly, immense. When we talk about our sun, we call it our sun or the sun because, you know, it's ours. However, I need you to realize that our sun is just a star. Uh, it's a star like the other stars that you would see in the night sky. 
Clearly, though, it looks much different. Our sun looks different from the other stars, because remember, it is a star, because it is so close to us. The other stars are incredibly far away, but our sun is very close to us. Now, when I say very close to us, uh, our sun is still about 93 million miles away. 93 million, that's a 9-3 with six zeros after it. So 93 million miles turns out to be relatively close. When we talk about the other stars, they are much, much, much further away. We won't go too much into that today. So I believe if you've seen a model of our solar system, which you have, I'm sure, and you know that our sun, we normally find at the center of the solar system, and that's where it is. And then everything, everything else in our solar system, whether it be asteroids, meteoroids, planets, uh, you know, all of those other things orbit around our sun. And that's due to its intense or its really, really immense gravity. And so our sun has a lot of gravity, and it kind of traps everything with that gravity, and it won't let it go. So it kind of holds it in place, and those things orbit around our sun. So let's take a look, and I want to zoom in on this photo just a bit, because really at the scale where we can see the entire sun, entire sun we can't see some things that I definitely want to point out. Now, if we look at these planets here at the bottom, we can see uh, over to the the, the right four, we, that is Jupiter, that's Saturn, looks like Neptune and Uranus. But uh, if you look at these little dots, let me see if I can't get my laser pointer up. If we look at these little dots over here, you can see that one of those little bitty bits over there is labeled Earth. Well, this is the relative size of Earth when, compar when compared to our sun. So everything you know or really know about is there on that little hunk of rock. And when you look at it uh, right next to our sun, instead of 93 million miles away, it's, it's really incredible. Now, I guess this is not a terrible time to go ahead and point out that there's an even smaller dot right next to the Earth there. And that smaller dot gives us a relative size of the moon. And uh, when we think about the moon, the moon seems to be really, really large when we see it in the sky, really about the same size as our sun. But remember how when things are further away, they can be bigger or smaller. We talked about that with the stars at night. Well, our moon is much, much smaller than the sun, quite obviously. However, it is also much, much closer than the sun. So it appears to be much larger when we see it in the sky. So you can, uh, you can notice across the top that an incredible amount of Earths. It looks like about 1.3 million Earths could fit inside the same volume or the same amount of space as the sun. Really uh, almost unimaginable. So let's look a little bit more at Earth's moon. So I've said that it's considerably closer. When I say it's considerably closer than the sun, really it's only about 330,000 miles away. Now this is the, this is the closest uh, large object to Earth in its orbit. Uh, and of course the, the moon is um, orbiting around the Earth, which is in turn orbiting around the Sun. Uh, and, and we know that uh, 330,000 miles, that's, that's a pretty long way. But remember, it's much closer than the Sun, which was 93 million miles away. If we once again look at a size comparison, there's a, there's a considerable size difference here, but much, much closer than, than, we, would, uh, than we see between the Sun and the Earth. Uh, the moon and the earth um, are comparable in size. It turns out that you could fit about 49 moons inside of the earth. Uh, the moon is considerably smaller, but not so much that, um, not the drastic difference that we see otherwise. So clearly our sun is the biggest thing in our solar system. And I just wanted to take a moment to, to sort of maybe back you up a little bit now that I've made you understand how big our sun is compared to our planet and to the moon and help you understand how big our sun is when we compare it to other things like us. Um, remember, I said that, that stars are going to be much bigger than things like planets. So let's, let's compare our sun to some other stars. Let's do talk about size. <clears throat> so 
So then we're going to start our size comparison here with our smooth. And now we can see that Earth's moon is, you know, it's much smaller than some of the other planets. I see Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Those are all planets that are relatively close to us in our solar system. Here we have Earth. And here is Earth right next to one of those gas giants in the outer solar system, Neptune. You can see Saturn is even considerably bigger than Neptune. Wow, here comes the sun in view. Um, we've seen that. Now we're going to start looking from here on in. Keep an eye on our sun there to the left, that little orange ball down to the left. We're now looking at other stars that are relatively close to us in the Milky Way galaxy. Keep in mind, over on the far left, oh, there goes our sun. We're seeing Rigel and the, uh, the Pistol Star. Our, our sun is really compared to other stars, is going to be really dwarfed. Our sun, despite it being very large compared to planets, when we compare it to other stars, uh, our sun is really just an average size star. It's a, it's a very average star, but it's at an average amount of heat. Um, overall, though, I don't want to lead you to believe that somehow our sun is special. Is it special in our solar system? Absolutely. Uh, but when we compare its size to things that are like it, and by that I mean other stars, we find that very quickly um, our sun is not going to be quite as big as we may have previously imagined it. Okay. All right. Let's deal with an assignment for this week. So last week we took a little we took a little look at soil. Um, and I gave you some assignments to do there. A couple of you uh, did send me pictures to show me that you had collected your soil sample and did your shake jar. Uh, and I did ask you each day to write down some key vocabulary. It wasn't all the soil vocabulary, but I think I asked you to find about 15 terms and to put those on paper somewhere. Hopefully you all put them in your science notebook. So this week I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask you to take a quiz. Okay, so this quiz for those of you who are using Google Classroom, it's going to be posted on Google Classroom. This will be through quizzes. You will get your grade almost immediately. Now, just like in class when we would use quizzes, you can use your resources. You can use your science notebook if you want to go back and look at last week's videos. Uh, I have posted some notes and the PowerPoint that are also with the quizzes. Um, but you can use really any of those things from last week that you need to. So when you're taking your quiz, once again, just like in class, take it as many times as you want. I'm only going to record your highest score. Okay, so that handles those of you who are using Google Classroom who have an internet connection. So let's take, let's think about those of you who don't have internet. Maybe you um, are getting your assignments on a USB drive. If you're getting a USB drive, you're going to need to open the quiz off your USB drive and write your answers on paper. Make sure you do this. So write your answers on the paper. You can still use your notebook. You wrote that vocabulary down last week for a reason. I'm also going to put up a PowerPoint that has some of that information I used to create last week's videos. I'm going to post that. I'm going to put that on your USB drive. So that will be there. If you need to look back for something or maybe you can't read your writing, then you can do that. When you finish, so when you have answered all the questions off the quiz, uh, there's going to be an answer key for you. It's going to be on the last page of the quiz. I want you to be honest. Don't look at the answer key. I want you to try this just using your notebook. Um, if you want to, after you've used the answer key, you can retry the quiz. Um, don't look at the key while you're retaking the quiz. After you're completely done and you're satisfied with the score that you have honestly made, I want you to write your name on your paper. Um, make sure it's neat and I can read it. And you are going to have to ask an adult to take a picture of it and they're going to need to text that picture to area code 828-506-3221. Um, I will be able to get it from there. So if you are on USB, you're going to need to do this on paper. You can still use your resources, but that, that will need to be texted to me. All right, guys, that should really do it for this first week. Good luck on your quiz, and I will see you tomorrow.